Welcome back. Day three of our Passover adventure. I'm Ms. Kim, the director of Noah's Ark Summer Camp, one of JCC's incredible J camps. And I've been telling you the story of Passover. Where we left off yesterday was when Moses got a message from the burning bush from God to go back to Egypt to tell King Pharaoh to let the Jewish people go. And he did that. And King Pharaoh's response was, no, 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 he is not letting them go. So of course, you know, God being this all powerful being got very upset that his people were enslaved and that King Pharaoh wasn't listening to his words. So horrible punishments came upon King Pharaoh and the Egyptian people. Really terrible things happened. Can you imagine waking up and all of the water being flooded? That wasn't enough for King Pharaoh to let the people go. One morning, when Pharaoh woke in his bed, there were frogs in his bed and frogs on his head. Frogs on his nose and frogs on the toes. Frogs here, frogs there. Frogs were jumping everywhere. But evil King Pharaoh was still not letting the Jewish people go. Then all of a sudden, everybody woke up. All the Egyptians were covered with lice. Their heads were itching. It was absolutely disgusting. But evil King Pharaoh said, no, the Jewish people cannot go. Then, wild beasts were everywhere. Lions just roaring. But evil King Pharaoh still said, nope, the Jews are my slaves and they will stay my slaves. And then, all of them was about to sing, all of them. It was terrible to see. It hurt so many. But King Pharaoh, no, the Jewish people will be my slaves forever. Then everybody woke up and there were boils all over their body. Thick, pussy boils. But King Pharaoh, no, I will not let them go. Then hell came out of the sky said, no, the Jews are my slaves. Locust, locust, you couldn't even take a step without there being locust everywhere. But yet, King Pharaoh wouldn't budge. Then one day, the sun didn't shine. It was dark, there was darkness everywhere. You couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. But King Pharaoh, thought he was all powerful and said, I don't care, no! Those Jews are my slaves. And the next punishment was really a horrible punishment. A terrible punishment, but King Pharaoh was just not listening to God. So, all of the Jews put lamb's blood on their doorpost and God sent down the death of the firstborn son to all of the Egyptian people. But the Jews put the blood on their doorpost so that the death of the firstborn would pass over, get it, pass over, pass over the Jewish homes. And that's just what God did. And finally, King Pharaoh could not take any more. Moses, he said, take your Jews and go, get out of my land. Well, Moses, was so incredibly excited, but also very nervous because King Pharaoh could change his mind at any time. He ran to the Jews, Jews, get your stuff, we're leaving quickly, as quickly as you can. Well, the Jews, this came so suddenly, they didn't know what to do. They started packing the very few things that they had, they put them in backpacks on their back. They were right in the middle of baking their bread, right in the middle. They didn't have time to let their bread rise. So they took the dough, put it right into their backpacks, and they headed out. The Jews were following Moses, heading out of the land of Egypt. It was hot in the desert where they were walking, and they walked and they walked and they walked, and they walked and they got hungry. They're escaping Egypt, but they wanted some of their bread. So they opened up their backpacks, and the dough was baked by the desert sun, and instead of bread, it formed a flat cracker that we call matzah. I 
I'm a little mob south of that and brown. Baked in the desert by the sun. Eat me on Pesa. Oh, what fun! And they ate their matzo and they kept walking and walking and walking and walking until they came to a sea. The Red Sea. It's too far to swim. There's no airplanes or boats that big back then. What are we going to do? And just then, Moses again spoke to God. And God told Moses to lift up his mighty staff and slam it into the Red Sea. And God created a miracle. The Red Sea parted. And the Jews were able to go through to freedom. Hurry, Jews, Moses called, hurry! And like just that, they turned around and King Pharaoh's army was chasing after them. Run, Jews, run, screamed Moses, faster, faster, faster! And just as the last Jew crossed the Red Sea, God created another miracle and the waters came crashing down onto the Egyptian people. And Pharaoh's army and the Jews were free, free at last. Elu hotzi hotzi anu hotzi anu nimitz rayim hotzi anu nimitz rayim dying you die dying you die dying you die dying you dying you dying you. And there's a lot of more verses to that song that I love singing. But for now, you just got the full story of the history of Passover. Every year since this happened, Jews all over the world come together to celebrate the freedom that the Jews have leaving Egypt into freedom into the land of Israel. Your families will gather for Passover with Passover seders. You'll talk about the seder plate that has all different things to help us remember the story of Passover and how hard it was for the Jewish people and how grateful we should be for our freedom to pray and to worship God as we believe. I hope you had fun with me. I know I had fun telling you the story of Passover. I hope to see you soon. Um, and I miss you terribly. And mwah, happy Passover, everybody. I can't wait for day camps to start. Shalom. Hi, everyone. It's me again. And I cannot believe it, but Passover is actually tonight. And um, we've done over the past couple of days, we've done a really cool pyramid activity and those cute little origami frogs. And today I wanted to share with you some songs and poems that you guys can read and sing at your Seder to just make it a really fun and interactive experience. This is a binder that my mom made with the actual text from the Haggadah on some pages. And on some pages she has some, her, some of her own little add-ins that she did, little poems or cute funny things that she found. Uh, if Dr. Seuss wrote the four questions and songs like Don't Sit on the Afi Komen. So you guys can click in the description for a link to a PDF with some really fun songs and poems and stuff to do at your Seder and I hope you guys enjoy and have a wonderful Passover.